Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today we're gonna be marking these Yeti dog bowls, and they look so good. And this is actually like a no-touch mark, so we're not gonna be marking the metal at all. We're just removing the powder coat, and we're doing it all with the fiber laser. Uh, and we don't use a rotary tool in this tutorial. This is obviously way too big for our, our truck to rotate this. We don't want any like special tools and stuff. That's not how we roll here. So uh, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it flat right under the laser and you're gonna be able to get a shiny stainless mark just like this. No mark on the metal at all. We're just removing the powder coat. I'm gonna walk you through all the settings and everything else you need to know in just a second. So don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now. So in order to get our dog bowl engraved, we're going to need something that's going to hold it upright because if we just set this on the fiber table, it's going to move. Uh, and that is not what we want. So uh, all you need is a roll of tape and the roll of tape is going to do an excellent job keeping this still. You'll have to fidget with it just a little bit in order to get things level. And we'll mess around with that with our stair once we get it under the fiber laser. But uh, that's all you need. You don't need a fancy rotary tool. You don't need any kind of like special jig. Uh, a roll of tape is gonna do great for marking this. Of course, it's gonna be a small mark. We can't rotate this while we're engraving it. It's just straight up too big for even the 80 millimeter truck to handle. You could get some kind of like attachments to like expand, but we don't have that at our disposal today. So we're just gonna have to work with what we've got because we gotta get this job done. So uh, here is kind of our setup. This is what we're gonna be throwing on the fiber laser. So let's jump into Illustrator, create our graphics. I'll see you guys over there. So here we are in Illustrator guys, and we're not going too crazy, but um, we'll just grab something here. We'll type Nitro, that's the puppy's name. And uh, I really like Futura right now, so I'd like to check out Futura. And uh, maybe if we could do it in like a a bold, uh, like a, yeah, like a, a bold with an italic on it. I might even shear this a little more. We can do object, uh, transform and shear. And we can give this just a little bit more, yeah, like that. That's looking like really fast, right? Cause his name is Nitro. We want it to look fast. Uh, we'll do object expand. And uh, that's looking really clean right there. Uh, I think we might need like some, some lines, you know, just to make it look like even faster. So if we come in here, uh, we can uh, take a look at this. Now I want my line thickness to match the thickness of the letters in the name. We can actually ungroup this and we'll steal the I because uh, the I is going to be the same thickness as everything else that's going on here. And uh, we'll go ahead and rotate it uh, so that we can get it straight-ish. We should be able to get pretty straight. There we go. Uh, nitro. And uh, it's not quite straight there. In fact, you know what? Let's just make a whole new line uh, that we know can be like 100% straight, something like that. That's going to look really good. And uh, check this out. Okay, guys. So look, we want one here. Uh, it's, it's getting hard with the snap. So uh, usually if you can't get things to move appropriately, the first go-to move is to just make it big. <laughs> when you when you make stuff big, you get much finer control of your movements. It's probably a reason why behind this that I don't fully understand, but uh, just, you know, I go big. Uh, and maybe we can do like three lines, uh, something like that looks pretty good. In fact, this one, if we go to the bottom here, let's just try to get that aligned with the bottom of the N. And then this one can go between the two, something uh, like this. In fact, why guess when we can make it perfect? So uh, we'll keep all, let's align all three of these in the center. And then we'll group these two. So let's group that. And then we can center this one to those two like this. So now we've got three evenly spaced lines. We can go ahead and ungroup these. We're done with that now. Uh, so three evenly spaced lines ready to go. And we wanna extend it into the end and way out here. And what we're gonna do here is we want these lines to cut off and match the end. So we'll copy the end over like this, just like that. And we'll select all of this nonsense. Now, don't worry, this looks really cluttered over here, but we'll deal with that in a second. Right this second, all we really need to worry about is clicking this clicking this and clicking this with the shape builder tool. And uh, as you will see, we can now go in and grab each of these here and pull them out. And we did miss uh, a little bit of that line there. So this wasn't perfectly aligned with the end. So let's just back up. 
uh, and take grab this box here again and we'll select the N uh, twice because we want that to be the active object and we'll just align to top uh, and that'll make sure that we don't get that line now so now we can one two and three again uh, with our, our N here and we will grab our shape builder tool and draw draw and draw and now watch this here we go so let's pull this away and boom we've got our perfect three lines that looks really clean and uh, we can get rid of all this extra stuff we don't need any of this anymore so we can just go in and delete it and uh, there's our N right there we've got a little bit of an extra outline we can get rid of that too and if we bring this back over it's now going to line up perfectly uh, with our N so that looks really clean but I think we need to do the same thing to the other side right so uh, we'll make another copy of the N and we're gonna drag it straight out just like this uh, that may be a little long so maybe we'll come back in just a little bit like maybe something like that and we're gonna do the same exact thing we're gonna grab our shape builder tool and we're gonna do a line a line and a line and we've got now our three lines uh, that looks perfect and we can select this mess again and delete that and that looks awesome so we just made almost like a little logo for this puppy uh, which is pretty great uh, as far as sizing it we know the letters can't be over a certain height so what we can do is we'll just grab our caliper and we will take a height measurement uh, and see how tall the dog dish is so let's go do that right now and the dog dish itself is 46 45 millimeters tall so we can go ahead and resize that based on what we know about this. So let's group Nitro together here. We'll come to Transform. We'll come to Height. And we'll call it, let's say we want some, you know, a little breathing room. So maybe 35 millimeters. So 35 millimeters and hit Enter. And uh, there it is. And we can get a length on this and just make sure it's not ridiculous. Seven inches. Uh, that sounds still a bit big. So maybe we'll take this down to 25 millimeters. Let's make it an inch tall. Uh, and that will give us a width of about five inches that sounds much more reasonable uh, so with that done uh, we're, we're basically good to go I think our three lines here might be a little close to the end so let's give that just a little bit more space a little bit more breathing room to kind of match what we've got going on with the font there and I think that's perfect so with that done we'll group it back up we'll go to file save as and we'll just call it nitro and we can save it to the desktop so we can bring it into Lightburn. so let's get that saved uh, version 8 as usual and with this done uh, we're good to go and we can now move into Lightburn and start getting our dog bowl set up in the actual machine so I'm gonna get this bowl set up in the machine first and then we will jump over to Lightburn for the final setup so let's jump over to the machine and see what we can do about getting that set up so here we are under the fiber laser and you're gonna notice the first thing we need to do is raise this fiber head up because we do not have enough space to even try to stand this up underneath the lens. So let's get that up first. Now we can't leave our focus here, but it's close enough to get started. The first thing we have to do is get the machine on and bring the artwork into Illustrator so we can see what kind of a curve we think we can get away with on this bowl. So here we are in EasyCAD, guys, and the first thing we need to do is bring in our graphic, which we have tucked away on our desktop. So let's get our desktop open, grab our Nitro file, and bring it in. I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing these, but I like to have kind of a measurement going into it, uh, and you can kind of get like an idea. I think we're probably going to be around this big with our name, uh, and that looks like it's going to be 62 millimeters. We could just call it 60. Uh, so 60 millimeters looks like it'll be pretty safe. When this is all said and done, this mark is actually going to be done out of focus, so uh, we'll have to play around with it a little bit. We don't want to mark the metal, so we're going to have to be really careful moving forward. But yeah, I think 60 millimeters is probably pretty safe. We can hit C to center it, and uh, let's go ahead and set the width to 60 millimeters and that looks really good right there uh you know now that i'm seeing it in software i think we might want to take it down to maybe let's try 50 uh that that may be what we can get away with on the fiber today and we're going to want to go ahead and hatch it and we need some settings so on a recent live stream we did we had some luck with these settings so we're going to try them again uh, a thousand speed 
40 power and 150 frequency. And the idea here is just to provide enough power to get through the powder coat on this without actually marking the metal. That's the goal, that's what we want. The high frequency keeps our pulse energy low, so that lowers the chance that we're gonna be ablating the steel. Uh, and then, of course, we're gonna be defocusing, but we'll talk more about that over at the machine. So let's light this up and then head over there. Now, typically I recommend raising your focus about four millimeters above where you would be in focus if you were actually trying to mark this. Uh, we're not gonna do that right now. We're actually going to uh, do maybe two millimeters uh, defocused because we do need some energy to hit these outer edges. Uh, it, it may actually only do one millimeter less, so maybe three millimeters defocused because this curve isn't too bad here. So uh, if we go ahead and focus right to the top. Let's let's do that. Let's just make sure we're right on point here. So focus right up to the top. And then we can use our counter here and just we're gonna move up three millimeters. So there's one, two, and three. And uh, now we are three millimeters defocused and this should give us a nice mark. The last thing we can't forget to do here is straighten. So let's actually run back over to EasyCAD and create a outline box so that we can just make sure this is all straight before we begin. In order to do that, we'll need a quick height. So let's just grab a quick height here. And it looks like we've got about 50 millimeters. So uh, with that measurement, we can create an outline box. So let's create our outline. We'll just drag it around the word nitro here. We can hit C to center. And then we can, uh, with our box selected, set our height value to 50 millimeters. There we go, and uh, it's a bit wide, so we can take that back down, but there's our 50 millimeters right there, so we can use this outline now to uh, straighten up our dog bowl. So let's straighten that up now. So I've got you guys about as straight as I can get you, and we're just gonna come in here, and we're going to line this up as well as we can. What I like to do, my preferred method, is to grab the corners here, and just make sure both corners are just touching the steel uh, border and if both corners are just barely touching we know it's going to be straight so let's just line those up and uh, we're really close right here uh, and then the next thing we want to do is just make sure that our dog bowl is nice and in the middle so we can do that uh, if you just get kind of a straight on look at it and I'll, I'll move the camera here and I've got you guys uh, about as dead on as I can you could light this up with a red line right down the middle if that helps you but you just want to make sure that you're bending around the curve evenly on both sides and we're really close right here as is so we don't really have to mess with anything but i wanted to show you what it looked like uh, so with that done we can drop our artwork back in and mark it if we need it guys we can uh we can turn the power way up and actually do a real mark on this but um so far i think we're going to be okay uh, we will see let's see what kind of results we get so we can cut our box out here we've only got our artwork left uh, let's take a look at our hatches and settings real quick one more time 45 degrees uh, 0 0.025 and uh, negative 45 degrees 0 0.025 i think we should change this so let's disable hatch number two and leave hatch number one on and we'll do a zero degree okay we're just gonna we can add passes if we need it but i don't want to do multiple passes if we don't have to so hatch two and three are disabled there uh, and we can just run with hatch one at zero degrees and again a thousand speed 40 power 150 frequency Let's go ahead and run it and see what this can do So I've inspected it and it seems like we have just a little bit of color on there. I'll try to light it a little bit better so you guys can see it, but um, it looks just dirty. It's kind of hard to tell if it's dirty or if it's annealed a color from the, uh, the 150 frequency. I think we're going to try to clean it without touching it. So let me go get some cleaning supplies and we'll try to give it a quick clean.
Okay guys, so it looks pretty good, but I think we can make it better. So I just bumped our power up by 10%. So we went from 40 to 50 power, and I came up with a new design that kind of takes up a little more space on the dog bowl. Here it is, uh, and this will go on the opposite side. I think it'll be kind of a cute add-on for the customer, and we get to experiment with a couple more settings. So uh, don't get me wrong, if we were doing something flat that was powder coated, I think the 40 power would be great. If we were doing something on the rotary, I think the 40 power would be great but I want to do this without the rotary because obviously we can't rotate the bowl, right? So uh, I think a little bit more power just to get around that curve is gonna be great. We did four passes last time. I had it set to 12 and we let four of them run through. So uh, this time I'm gonna set it to four. We're just gonna go with that by default. I've got the same focus. I've got the same setup. Nothing has changed. I've just bumped another 10% power and we're doing a new graphic. I like this one because it takes up a little more of that vertical space. So I think it's gonna feel bigger on the bowl so uh, let's give this a try and see what this does we'll just get rid of our outline box here we no longer need it so we'll delete that and uh, let's go run this one and see how this one does So again, guys, all things the same here, just an extra 10% power. That's looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and give it a quick cleaning. And here is the finished mark, guys. It's got that shine. It looks really nice. We've got the other side here too. So on one side, we've got the name Nitro and that's looking really awesome. And then if we flip it around on the other side here, we've got kind of like our stylized Nitro logo. I think both look really good. They're the same width. It took a little scrubbing to get off any kind of like residue that was left over after the four passes with our special setting, but we didn't touch the steel at all. And that was the goal. And it came out so good. So, so, so good. No rotary required. So uh, I hope you guys like the way these look. I really, I'm, I'm digging it, guys. I, th I think these look super cool. I think the customer is going to be super duper happy with them. I hope you guys are happy with them too. If you guys got value out of this video, don't forget to smash the like button and let other people know that the content is good. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time I upload a video. If you love the channel and it's the best thing that's ever happened to you, please consider signing up for the Patreon. Patreon is how we keep the channel going uh, and it's amazing. You get so much extra value for becoming a patron. Multiple times a week we do Patreon only live streams. Uh, you get instant access to my entire fiber laser and CO2 laser settings library. You get bonus episodes of our laser source podcast weekly and uh, you get access to a brand new patron only only community forum you get a special role in the discord i mean there's just tons of stuff so go check that out it's patreon.com slash laser everything and there's a link down in the description right next to the link to the discord our amazing online community we just passed a thousand members we've got a thousand members on our online discord community ready to help you talk about settings share their work i mean there's just all kinds of stuff going on in there it's really become like a gigantic vibrant community full of amazing people i remember when we were bragging about having 40 members and now we're over a thousand that's crazy so while you're down there checking out the link to the patreon go check out the link to the discord and uh also i'm gonna have links to these down in the description below so if you would like to pick up some of these so that you can use them in your shop there are affiliate links in the description for you to check out as well that's all i've got guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one